Hello, we're going to continue to discuss genetics in this video. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of genetics. We'll talk about Gregor Mendel, who's considered the father of genetics. We'll also go over some of the nomenclature associated with genetics, okay? So Gregor Mendel was not actually a scientist, per se. He actually was a monk, and in the time he lived, it wasn't unusual if you came from a less well-off family that the way you could educate yourself would be to go into the clergy, go into a monastery, um, and then they would be taught and they could learn about really any topic they wanted to. And for Mendel, um, part of his duties in the monastery were tending the gardens. So it was his responsibility to take care of the gardens. And in doing that, he made an observation, which is part of our scientific method, okay? What he observed, all right, was he noticed that the pea plants that he was tending had some different characteristics, okay? He noticed some of the plants were short, some were tall, okay? Some had white flowers. Some had purple flowers. All right, let's get a different blue marker here. Um, some had round seeds. Some had wrinkled seeds. Some of the peas were green. Some of the peas were yellow. Okay, and that really fascinated him in terms of how those differences came about. So, you know, the concept with genetics was that, you know, the parent and the offspring look similar but not identical, okay? With pea plants, the offspring tended to be identical because pea, pea plants actually self-fertilize. So what Mendel did is he took steps to prevent the self-fertilization so that he could mix a, say, plant that had purple flowers with a plant that had white flowers. And he could observe the results and make some conclusions from that, all right? And in doing those studies, he literally set up hundreds and hundreds of genetic crosses, all right? And what he determined, okay, were that there were specific traits that were passed from parent to offspring, okay? And he Basically, out of doing that, was able to generate plants that were what he called true breeding, meaning they always gave, in the case of purple flowers, purple flowers, white flowers, white flowers. And then that's when he started mixing to kind of see how those traits sorted out, okay? And while um, Mendel didn't coin the term genes, that's essentially what he was looking for or looking at. He was looking at genes that controlled the color of the uh, flower, height of the plant, um, shape of the, the pea, color of the pea, okay? Now in the case of Mendel, he made some fortunate um, choices in what he studied because most of the traits he studied were not on the same chromosome in the pea plant. And that's important because if genes are on the same chromosome and they're in very close proximity, sometimes they um, are going to look like they travel together. And in terms of that, we call that genetic linkage. And it just has to do with physically how close genes are located on a chromosome. But for Mendel, fortunately, none of his genes were linked, so he was able to kind of track these different traits, okay? And the way we now follow that genetic, the P generation, 
is going to be the parental generation. Okay? We've also got associated with that the F1. Okay? The F1, and I'm going to use ditto marks there, the F1 generation refers to the offspring of the, the um, parental generation, okay? So we've got P, we've got F1. The other one that we'll talk about in this class would be F2, all right? That's going to be offspring from the F1 generation, okay? And what that F stands for is philil, okay? Um, but I'm not going to really have you worry about that too much. As long as you know where the sequence goes, okay? P generation is going to give us the F1. F1 gives us the F2, okay? So keep that in mind as far as our genetic crosses, okay? And um, those heritable traits are now what we call genes, okay? Because we know about the structure of DNA, we know about chromosomes, and those genes, okay, are going to have a physical location on a chromosome. And when we talk about the physical location, okay, um, and I think I've got some drawings uh, later in the PowerPoints, and we'll do this again, okay? So if this is our chromosome, Our gene, and we can say maybe this is the gene for purple flowers. Is going to have some physical location on the chromosome. All right. Now what we have when we talk about genes, okay, we have alleles, okay? Alleles are an alternative version of a gene. Now sometimes those alternative versions are going to be something that's detrimental. It'll be a mutation. Sometimes it's normal variation in the population, and we can put this in here, okay? This, I put this box in pink, if we have this gene here, we might have, or we would have, our white flowers, okay? So it's located in the same physical location on the chromosome. But the difference between the purple allele and the white allele would have something to do with the particular DNA sequence in it. So the DNA sequence between the purple flowers is going to be a little bit different than the white flowers. Okay, but they would be considered alleles because they're alternative forms of the gene. Okay, and when we talk about alleles, something that's going to come up is the, com the um, concept of that gene being dominant or that gene being recessive, okay? And I'm going to talk a little bit more about dominance and recessive in the next video because I've kind of run out of board space again. Um, but essentially what happens with genes that are dominant, you only need one copy in order to have that particular trait expressed, okay? If a gene is recessive, 
you need to have two copies in order to see that particular trait, okay? So with what I've set up here with the purple and the white flowers, okay? So those chromosomes, the chromosome from the purple flower maybe came from the dad, chromosome with the white flower maybe came from mom, okay? You're gonna get an allele from dad, you're gonna get an allele from mom, all right? In this case, because purple is going to be dominant, the flowers for the particular offspring that has this genetic combination would be purple, okay? Now, if both of these, if we had two chromosomes with white flowers, then the, the um, plants that you would get out of that would have white flowers, okay? And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in the next video because I'm gonna talk a little bit more about a phenotype versus a genotype. Phenotype will be something that we can see, like the purple flowers, the white flowers. Genotype, we're talking about DNA sequence, okay? But the next video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. If you have any questions, please let me know.